As a prisoner, contacting the outside world is a challenge. Letter writing is easiest, phone calls if you have money, and visits if you're lucky. And in women's prisons, many inmates are also mothers, kept apart from their children. CTV's Abigail Beeman joins us for another look behind prison walls. And Abigail, when the Grand Valley Institution for Women was opened, there were meant to be opportunities for women and babies to stay together. Right, and that's not happening anymore because of overcrowding, Megan. But even though there are roadblocks, one family tells us visiting is the best thing Grand Valley does. This is a close family, but one person is missing. Just because Nikki's not with us on the outside doesn't mean we should not continue with our family needs. Nicole Kish is serving a life sentence at the Grand Valley Institution for Women after what was dubbed the Panhandler murder. These family members try to visit as often as possible, along with little sister Victoria. They're very supportive of Nikki and Victoria's relationship, very accommodating with Victoria. Visiting hours are twice a week. You try and keep it as normal as you can get it. The situation's completely abnormal because, I mean... You have people like listening into your conversations. We still know that each and every visit she's going to be strip searched, which makes leaving, which is already a very difficult time, even worse. Mom Christine Lewis Bivens puts money in Nicole's account for phone calls, about $150 a month. Kish was also in contact with the outside world through this blog run by her family. Nikki takes a lot of flack at Grand Valley for this. But she stopped passing this message to CTV through her mother. I stopped blogging as the backlash I experienced became too severe. My words, Nikki pays for my words. So every time we speak out, every time we ask for answers, Nikki pays the price. Can you tell us how, what kind of a price she's paying? Um, I can't, sorry. Kish's family considers themselves lucky. They're close enough to visit, and they say there aren't many visitors during visiting hours. Perhaps the group that knows that best, Aboriginal women. They make up nearly 50% of GVI's population, and at this support centre, they say only about 10% of those women have family close enough to visit. Kitchener's Healing of the Seven Generations runs women's circles every week, and some inmates are able to join them, escorted by a GVI staff member. I had the opportunity to say, yeah, smudge with the medicine and be amongst the rest of the sisters that um, they're sitting in the circle with. Executive Director Donna Dubé says it makes a huge difference in a woman's healing journey. Still, when we talk about our own medicines and our own traditions, that's not... Saskatchewan Cree, and that's not Mi'kmaq, uh, Newfoundland, you know, it's not any of those. We have to look at, they're missing their culture. Wherever home is, that's often where children are left behind. If I w wouldn't have been able to fix myself and get myself on the healing journey, it would have fallen onto my daughters too. Marie Pelletier says her daughters were lucky. Their father was supportive and cared for them while she spent time in and out of provincial jail for assault. But many children are put in foster care with non-Aboriginal families. That's how Pelletier grew up. My culture was taken from me, and um, we, ha we had to grow up with a lot of, a lot of bullying. I mean, there's a very, very high percentage of women that are in prison who do have children. Many of the women have children while they're in custody. Amy Ryer chairs the local Elizabeth Fry Society's board. The group has two staff members at Grand Valley one devoted to connecting mothers and children when possible. Sometimes the children come and live with the women in prison and that's currently not being done due to overcrowding. Ryer hopes it can happen in the future but with a 300 million dollar cut to the Correctional Service of Canada's budget this year and next that future is uncertain. While we're talking dollars, it costs nearly 600 a day to keep a woman in federal prison, and that's 211,000 tax dollars a year. The cost to keep the average offender in the community, $30,000 a year. Rosie Chris John Weiler, whom you heard from in this story, is trying to launch a halfway house in Kitchener specifically for Aboriginal women, but she doesn't think the community is ready just yet. Now, Abigail, since your series launched, there's also been an update to Nicole Kish's situation. 
This week, Kish was banned from attending her university program. She says it's because she didn't report her cellmate, who was allegedly trying to brew her own alcohol. She says she was charged for not telling guards, though Kish says doing so would have put her in potential danger. Even though Kish has the right to do an interview with us, she was told she couldn't. But in response to our series, she's passed us a message through her mother, and so have some of the other women in the MAX unit. And you can find those on our website, kitchener.ctvnews.ca.